And welcome. Today we are doing a question from Leak Code called Minimum Path Sum. It is a medium. Let's get right into it. So, given a m by n grid filled with non negative numbers, find a path from top left to bottom right, which minimizes the sum of all numbers along its path. Note you can only move either down or right at any point in time. So, this note is actually going to make the problem so much simpler. Um, and we'll see why in a little bit. So example one, we have the input grid 131, 151, 421. And here we output seven because the minimum path would be one to three to one to one to one. And any other path that we take would only give us an output greater than seven. Example two, we have grid one, two, three, four, five, six. To visualize this a little bit better, we would go from one to three, from one to two to three, and finally to six, giving us an output of 12. And these are just some constraints here. So how do we solve this? Well, to see this, let's look at example one again. Here we have the same grid. And what's sort of the first thing that comes to mind? Well, we could go through every single path, find the minimum, and simply return that. And if we do that, we'll have a total of six paths. We would have 1, 3, 1, 1, 1, outputting 7, 1, 3, 5, 1, 1, 11, 1, 3, 5, 2, 1, 12, 1, 1, 5, 1, 1, 9, 1, 1, 5, 2, 1, 10, and finally 1, 1, 4, 2, 1, which outputs 9. And here we can see that the smallest one was what we output 7. But what do we notice here? The first thing we notice is that, well, we always start with one and end with one, and that's only because that's what's given, right? We have to stop from the top left and end at the bottom right. So there's sort of only one option, one origin and one ending point, right? But something else. The only way we can get to the end, we can get to one, is either through a one or a two. And the only way we can reach a 1 or a 2 is through 1, 5, or 4, which in turn can only stem from either a 3 or a 1. And this is because we can only move down and to the right. That means we can only come from a cell that's to the top of us or to the left. This means that if we somehow know the minimum path to get to 3 and to 1, well, now we have all our options and can branch out to four, five, one, because we have all the origin points to get to those three. These are the only two cells that will get us to four, five, or one. But we know that. So let's say to get to three, we know the minimum path. That would just be one plus the cell we're on, so four. And to get to one, the cell over here it would be one plus one, two. Now, all we have to do is take the minimum of either four or two plus the cell we are on. That's the minimum path to either four, five, or one. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, the cell over here, the minimum path to get over here would either be from the top or its left, and the top doesn't exist. So here we can only get to it from the one to the left of us. So four plus one, it would take five to get to this upper right corner. Now, what's the minimum path to get to this middle cell? Again, we can only come here from either four or two. The smallest is two. So two plus five is seven. The smallest path to get to this middle cell would be seven. And for four, we can only come here from the top, so six. So now we have the minimum paths to get to this middle diagonal over here. Now we can see what's next. Well, if we're looking at this cell over here, again, either from the top or the left. So we know the minimum path to get to the top is 5, and the minimum for the left is 7. Either one will lead us to the cell we're on. So all we have to do is take the minimum and add the value of our current cell. So this would be 6. And here we would go with the left, which is 6. So 6 plus 2 is 8. And for this final cell, we would just go from the top. So 6 plus 1 is 7. And if we see, that is exactly what we output, 7. So this is exactly how we're going to solve this. We're going to go through this entire grid, top down, left to right. And as we loop through, find the minimum between the top and the left, if they exist. 
and add that to the value of our current cell. So what we need is the minimum path of either what's on top or the left. And once we know that, we can now construct the rest of the grid. And finally, what we would do is return the value in the bottom right. So let's go ahead and code all of this up. The very first thing we want to do is loop through the entire grid. So for row in range len grid, for column in range len grid zero. What do we do now? Well, now we're going to have three conditions. The first one is if we are in this first row, because if that's the case, we can only get our minimum path for whatever cell we are on by looking to the left and adding what's currently in our cell. We can't really look to the top. And if we are in this very first column, we can only look to the top. We don't have anything to the left. So in order to address that, um, if row equal equal to zero and column not equal to zero, and this is because we don't really want to do anything with this first index. It's our starting point. There's no need to touch that. So if we're in this first row and not in this first element, then we know grid row column will equal whatever's in there right now plus whatever's to the left of it. So grid row column minus one. L if column equal equal to zero and row not equal to zero. This means we're in this first column, but not in this first top part of the column. Then grid row column is going to equal whatever's in there right now, plus whatever's to the top. So grid row minus one column. And if none of these are true, that means we know we are in index one, one, or onward, then all we have to do is make our check, right? See what's to the top and to the left, find that minimum, add that to our current cell to get the minimum path of where we are. So elif row not equal to zero and column not equal to zero, then we are in index one, one and on. Then grid row column plus equals the minimum of what's to the top. So row minus one, column or grid row column minus one. So whatever's in there right now, plus the minimum of what's at the top or to the left. And once that is done, all we have to do is return what's in this very bottom most corner, the bottom right most corner. So return grid row column. And we can just use row and column variables again, because after they loop through, they are going to actually store two two. They finished looping through, and that's the bottom index we want anyway. So return grid row column. Let's run code. Accepted and submit. And it is accepted as well. So talking about space and time complexity, over here we loop through the entire grid once. So given a n by n grid our time complexity would be o of m times n and for space we are only modifying the input grid that we're given so that's constant space o of one if you have any questions at all let me know down below otherwise i'll see you next time